Hey guys, we're Adam and Steph, and we're converting an old school bus into our dream tiny home on wheels. This week we're doing the electrical wiring inside of our bus, and that's all up to Adam. So, good luck! This episode will turn the page to a new chapter of our series as we're finally getting our bus spray insulated. But before we can blast some foam, we've got to run some wires and tie up a lot of loose ends. We're up on the roof. We've moved one of our solar panels over because we need to run our wires from our solar panels into the bus. This is something that needs to get done before we do spray insulation, so we're doing it now. So we've got a wire gland, and I've got some two to one MC4 connectors. I'm going to be running my solar panels two in series and then two in parallel. Then I have some uh, PV wire and I'm gonna run off of this into the gland and then inside the bus. So I'm connecting these two in series. So the positive and negative of these ones are gonna be connected together. So I can do that right now, just like that. Now they're connected in series. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my connectors. I got my positive connection. I'm gonna put it onto this. And then my negative connection, I'm gonna put it onto the opposite one. And then my other cable, I don't have the other solar panel because I'm sitting where the solar panel would be. So I'm gonna take the positive from the back panel and connect it to the other side of this splitter, or joiner, connect that together. And then out of the other side, I will take my longer cable, connect it, and then run it through the gland. Solar panels are now all wired together. I've cable managed the cables. The wire gland is installed all nice and I've tightened down the glands so they're tightened onto the cables so we don't have any leaks. I have the positive and negative ready for this last panel. So all we have to do is bring the panel over, I'll get them connected, and then we can bolt it down and solar panels are done. Right here is going to be the central hub for my electrical system. It's going to be sitting in this area, and so all my wiring needs to come to this one place from everywhere else. And then from here, my main power that's going to go down to my underbody box will travel from here down to there. I also have my solar panel wires right here, and they're going to go down to the box as well. And so this is just going to be a very central location for everything. So for wiring that I'm using inside the bus, I bought some of this 12 gauge uh, extension cord. As I'm editing this video, I realize how crazy that may sound. Now we're not using this extension cord as the extension cord. We're cutting off the ends of it and we're just using it as the wire. Extension cord is much cheaper, especially because we got it on sale, than just buying that kind of AC stranded wire. It's hard to come by. So yes, extension cords was our answer. We just used the wire in the extension cord and not the plug sides. We cut those right off. So back to the video. I picked 12 gauge because it's as big as I can find an extension cord. The reason I'm using stranded for my AC wires is because there's a lot of vibrations in this bus, especially because the diesel engine, it really shakes. And solid core wire is prone to cracking with a lot of vibration and movement. So that's the reason why they use stranded wire in vehicle wiring systems. So I'm going to follow that and use stranded wire for my AC systems as well as my DC systems. For my DC wire, I have a couple spools of 16 gauge in black and in red. And I also have this 
speaker wire, which is just 16 gauge uh, wire that's inside of a sheathing. I'm also putting speakers in the bus as well, so I can use this um, for my outdoor speakers, as well as indoor speakers that I'm gonna be installing into the bus in the future. So yeah, not complicated. And it's a nice clean job. Look at, I get to wear nice clothes for once. Okay, we have a hard deadline of when we have to move the bus, which is next Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. So I have six days to do all the wiring, have all the strapping done, and have the bus completely prepped for spray insulation. So with that time constraint, I haven't been filming as much of what I'm doing, but I'm taking this opportunity to kind of explain the things I've done. And I'm gonna show you one thing I am doing, which is a three-way switch. And I'm gonna show you the wiring that I'm running to do that. Okay, so as I said before, my distribution system's here. And so what I have here, these are my two yellow wires going across the roof and down to here. One of them is my kitchen wire and the other one is my stove wire. I am running a dedicated circuit for this electric stove we're installing. It's a 120 volt, 15 amp stove. And so that uses a lot of current. So I'm gonna be running the oven on its own circuit. Everything else is gonna share the other one. In here, I have all my DC wires that are going across to my kitchen. Because there's so many uh, loose wires, I didn't wanna risk what happened to Adventure Trudge. Uh, I'm learning from you guys, Gavin and Emily. <laughs> when they did their spray insulation, the spray insulation pushed down their electrical wires very close to where they were like flushing up the spray insulation with their walls. And what happened was some of the wires got damaged. So I've run conduit over the bigger sections of wires so that the bulk of the wires are protected. If I'm shimming and I see black plastic, I know to stop. And then this is, makes it a lot easier and, and neater to just glue them or zip tie them to the roof. Even knowing the wires are gonna be inside of the walls, it's nice to manage your wires. So coming towards the back of the bus, I run a wire that comes back to here. With a DC circuit, you can also share a single run as long as the combined draw that all the components use is lower than the rated capacity of the wire. So this wire is going to run the fan in the bathroom as well as the lights. So I'm gonna be paralleling this wire off to these two, and these are both gonna be switched independently. So I have my fan, which I wanna have on a switch right around here. That's why I have it sitting here. And I also have the lights for the bathroom, which are sitting here as well. So I probably have a light switch in this general vicinity where there's an invisible wall. And then the wires continue back. And then I have my wire sitting right here. This is gonna be the light. And then another wire back there, which is my fan. Now for this wall, you'll notice there's no wiring. That's because most of this wall is going to be covered with something. This is gonna be a desk. There's gonna be a full height closet here. And then our bed's gonna be here. Instead of running all my wires in the walls for this section, I'm gonna be running my wires outside of the wall. So that increases repairability if I have an issue, increases access, and it makes it easier for me right now. <laughs> Not gonna do this until after because my distribution's right here and it's just gonna be running across under cabinets. Not hard to hide, very easy to hide. So I figured out what I need to do right now. I run that in the front. So the last thing to do is the light switches. Let me show you how I'm doing that. So Stephanie wants to have two switches for the main lights in the front. We want to switch right here and we want to have a switch beside our bed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run wires from my electrical system to one side. So I got two wires, a positive and negative. And then from here, I need to run straight over to the other switch location. So from here to there, I'm going to be running three wires. So I'm gonna run those three wires across to the other switch and power to the closest switch. So I think I'm gonna run the power to that switch on the other side and then the three wires will come across to here so that from either end, I can turn off the lights. 
lights. I don't want to come all the way in front of the bus to turn off the lights at night. This is actually like the most complicated part of wiring is, is doing a three-way switch. It'll be a little bit more tricky with the actual um, setting up the device, like setting up the switches, which we'll cover in another video. For now, we're just worrying about having the correct amount of wires and having those wires be identifiable. I've taped off this window because we're gonna keep this window, but these three windows, we're gonna be painting and deleting and building a wall over them. So I've got this high performance wheel coating and that's what I'm gonna use. <laughs> We completely removed all of the material, like all of the, the metal off of the back. We weren't sure exactly how we we're gonna strap it. We knew that we only wanted to have one window in the middle. And now you can see that Stephanie had cleaned up and painted those other three windows so that we could spray insulate the two side ones. And then we're gonna build up the door a little bit and then have that middle one blocked off as well. So now when the spray insulation guy comes, he can spray in those cavities full of spray insulation. We ended up spray painting the windows. We wanted to tint them like limo tint dark so that it would stay adhered to it because it is getting buried inside of a wall. We called the tint place and they never returned our call. So we're under the wire. We don't have enough time to be screwing around. So we spray painted them. It's on really good, but in the future, we don't know if it'll start to peel or if it starts to come off and if it does, then it does. We're perfectionists. We'd like to do things the right way. This may not be the right way, but it is a way we've solved the problem that we have. We got to keep moving forward. We can't get hung up on these little things. We have talked to somebody who is a bit of a window expert, and he says that those windows, if they do break, are removed from the outside. So if it does need to be replaced in the future, it is still possible, which makes me feel better. I thought that rear access was going to be needed to change out the window, but they are uh, replaced from the outside. One other thing that I'm going to do as well is I'm going to run one HDMI cable from uh, this side up and over into this side. Something that I seen Jimmy and Natalie do was they had the forethought to run an HDMI cable across their bus and that allows them to plug an HDMI cable to their computers and run things off their TV, which is on the other side of the bus watching their video and seeing them do that, um, put it on my list of things to do. So I'm gonna have my computer station, which is gonna be part of our desk back here. And so I want to be able to connect my computer to a possible TV. It's gonna be in this corner right here. Well, there's so many little solutions that we've had to come up with in the last two weeks of just how do we do this and how we do that and let's put some support material here and put a two by three underneath it so that our cabinets can fix to it. So. So many little things going on. They're all dealt with. Um, I'm glad they're done. Now we can move on to the spray insulation. So that's next. I'm running under the wire. I have a couple, I still have a couple things to do and he's coming tomorrow morning. So I gotta get him done. This like, I'm, I'm here until, I'm here all night. If this doesn't get done, like it, like, it has to get done. Day. Super excited. We woke up 
pretty early this morning um, to get some finishing touches done, like some of the strapping and pulling back some of the wires. We hot glued some of the smaller wires and then we used zip ties with uh, 3M tape um, to sort of hold them back. He's there now getting the spray insulation done. We're getting two inches of closed cell spray insulation. I'm just running home to grab the money. Got that this morning. I'm super excited to see how this turns out. It's another step that, you know, changes the look of the bus and it just, you know, it's another chapter here on our bus build. And pretty soon we can start building out the walls and cabinets and things like that. Woo! Yay! So excited. Foam is in. Yeah, it looks super good. We're super happy with it. We just obviously have to do a little bit of cleaning up, um, you know, trimming some spots that are like too much. Yeah, it took him about three, four hours to do the entire bus. We got him to do the wheel wells as well. And I know some people are curious about how much we paid for this, and we paid about $1,500. Um, but we did get a few quotes up to $2,700. Yeah, so. well, the rate we got was very, very reasonable and it's like almost hard to find a rate so good. Mm -hmm. So we're really appreciative of him of giving us such a great rate. He really just wanted to help us out. He saw that this is a cool project and I think he found helping us was valuable yeah. to him and that's why he gave us such a good rate. The only other thing now is we just gotta pop the windows in and then we're ready to leave whenever we need to leave. And we're supposed to leave today, but it's getting extended yeah. and we might actually not even have to leave, so. We're just kind of calling it, we're going by day by day. Every day that we get in here is another day that we have a perfect conditions to do stuff. Yeah. I think we might have to start thinking about water tanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 